What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another EFI KLX video. Check it out. So three months ago, I told you that it would not be long for an update and three months later, I'm telling you sorry for yet another wait. So to update you from the last time you saw this thing, I'm pretty sure it had a silver swing arm and did not have a carbon chain guide, did not have a new chain, did not have an A-Racer standalone ECU, did not have a DNM shock. Black swing arm looks cool, happy with that. A-Racer ECU is just rigged up here for now. I gotta find a spot for it to live. It's way better than the Bazaz setup because I don't have to run the OEM ECU in conjunction with an aftermarket tuner. This is a one-stop shop. It covers all the bases. Most importantly, I added a V2 head. It didn't feel that good before. After I rode it a couple times, I didn't show that in the last video, but after it idled and I worked out some kinks, I took it for some spins and it just felt corked or like bottled up. Like I just wasn't able to get the performance out of it that I expected. It was definitely slower than my Honda with a 132 kit and it just left me wanting more. So we did a V2 head and then I did a Composimo billet adapter flange. You can see that little plate in there and that's so that you can angle the throttle body forward like this. And this is all still for Z125 stuff. So it still didn't fit right. I wasn't able to use the bigger port intake manifold that came with the V2 head. Although it was designed for Z125, so it had a throttle body provision, it still wasn't compatible with the KLX 110 frame. You can see I have a ghetto rigged air filter on here. This is just temporary, I promise. I'm using the OEM throttle body flipped 180. I had to cut the OEM flange up off of the OEM intake manifold, rotate it, and then weld it. And it does work, and the bike seems to rip. There's no ignition timing added right now. It's just got 35, I think 35% to be specific uh, fuel across the board to account for the bigger piston and the higher airflow of this head and then I did throw on an FMF titanium exhaust system with the real big diameter header which is great for big bore kits and whatnot. This isn't actually going to stay on here. I ordered a rocket exhaust, big bore rocket exhaust. It just came out. Matt from Factory Mini Bikes always hooks it up. He only had two on hand. He sold me one of them that'll be here tomorrow so in this video we will install that. A few more things need to change. The adapter here leaks a little bit. I need to fix that so I got some uh, weld on bungs and quarter inch ID from Jags. Those are going to get welded on here and here. I'm going to add new hard line and a new flange and just redo that whole setup. I'm going to clean up all this wiring here, tuck it in, put the number plates on, and then this has to go. This is the OEM like rectifier regulator, and I didn't realize it was going to catch on the clutch cable. So right now it's just rigged up so that I can ride it, but either I need a longer clutch cable or move this or both or delete the clutch. I haven't decided yet. One of those is going to happen. Anyhow, that's it for updates. The bike runs sick. It seems to be very reliable. Like I said, there's no ignition timing in it yet. It's not even properly fueled. It's just safe. So we're going to go out and ride it, do some testing, get some audio clips through the, you know, the rhythm section and whatever, so you can really hear how this thing revs and sounds and then we will move into the other stuff but I wanted to capture this let you guys check it out so let's go do that and then we'll move on to more mechanical stuff sick <laughs> All right, so early on we lost a header nut and uh, front tire's got a slow leak, but we're aired up, we got a nut on there, doing some runs. Rides pretty good. Never really made any suspension changes. Just kind of going around and seeing how it feels. Definitely sounds cool. So far, all I have are good results. This throttle cable is driving me absolutely insane. It needs to get fixed. It's probably the biggest problem, and I still have the Z125 throttle on here, which is nice to have the, the run off and the, the electric start, but I can't find, like no one seems to make a Z125 extended cable. The Grom stuff, it's like very easy to find. And then the CRF 110s, also easy to find extended throttle cables. Those are both dual throttle cable throttle body setups. This is a single cable. And if you look down there, you can see how tight it is. It's like, Shake it here, there you go. There's no room left. 
But other than that, it rides awesome. Super stoked. These forks came off my CRF, so they're already in. And the rear shock, the DNM, seems to be doing okay. I stiffened it up a little bit. It jumps pretty good. I'm a little skeptical to really ride that hard with the throttle sticking like it is. Uh, but I do want to show you guys the A Racer flamethrower launch control, whatever you want to call it. So we have our app here. Definitely really bad for everything involved, but it sounds cool, so there's that. Overall, great testing moment, and then uh, we're gonna wrap this for the day, but this video will continue on till tomorrow, where we put the new exhaust on, new foot pegs, hopefully figure out a throttle cable solution, so on and so forth. All right, two days later. I hope you guys like the riding clips. It definitely doesn't sound the same in person. It sounds higher pitched on the video. The mic just doesn't pick it up, I guess. Uh, but regardless, it needs to be repacked. And in this case, we're just gonna take it off and, and sell it as is, most likely. So I got a new rocket exhaust and a few other parts. Let's get it all installed. Here's the new exhaust. It looks pretty cool. I took off the chubby sticker on there to expose more of that carbon. I think it looks pretty nice. Header looks cool. Finish isn't exactly what I expected, so I'm probably gonna hit it with the sander and try to uh, polish it up a little bit before we put heat into it. Got a skid plate, got a cradle, got some IMS foot pegs. And then uh, throttle cable wise, I explained some of the problems I was having. I was sitting there thinking, you know, the CRF 110 has a lot of extended throttle cable options and it does have a dual cable throttle body, but I could just take one of the cables. And so that's what I did. So this doesn't actually fit inside here underneath this grommet, you can see it's it fits enough, like it works, and you can't pull it out, but it doesn't thread in, so it's not a long-term solution, but it works great for right now. All the slack is gone out of the cable, and there's plenty of room here. It's got a nice little 90 right on the edge where it meets, so it doesn't actually hit the fender. It is close, but clearance works well, and there's no slop in it whatsoever. It feels great. I also found an extended clutch cable that was just a regular KLX cable. I threw that on here. It looks a lot cleaner. It's no longer binding on my rectifier, so I don't have to I have to tighten this, but I don't have to move it. And uh, that seems to work okay for right now too. I think I've decided to leave the clutch on this bike. Otherwise it's gonna be so much like my CRF, I don't really see the point in having two bikes. So if it feels, you know, this one's got bigger tires, it's got a clutch, it's got a little more power. Try to make it slightly different so that there's a reason to have two bikes other than just the, the cool factor of having a fuel injected Kawasaki, I guess. So I think, uh, yeah, we're gonna throw the exhaust on, then I need to clean up all of this stuff. I wanna make this thing done. I wanna wrap up this project completely. So we're gonna do the exhaust real quick to get motivated. Hopefully that looks cool. And then uh, use some of that steam to move forward. A couple other things that need to change are like these plugs right here. I don't know why I decided to terminate them in this spot, but when you turn the bars, you can see they're in the way. And because they're not mounted, they don't break, but that's not gonna work. So I'm probably gonna lengthen those wires and put those plugs up here. And all of that long-term is gonna be beneficial because I can pull this entire harness off this bike and put it on a jig and make another harness for this Z125 swap bike. There's a whole story behind this bike, which I'll get to later on, but this bike is now mine. It's no longer my friend's and it's almost ready to run. It's gonna be for my girlfriend and it's, it's gonna be a pretty cool setup, but that's, that's, that's later on. So let's go ahead and polish this header up, see what it looks like, pull off the FMF, get it installed, see what it sounds like, and then move forward. So after about 30 minutes of trying to find a way to hold this, I got it nice and polished up. It's nothing crazy. You can maybe capture that finish with this camera. Let's see. It's, uh, it's, it's nothing polished. It's not like crazy mirror finish or anything like that. It's just a little bit cleaner than it was and I think it looks nice. So you can see when the header comes up to close this gap here where the gasket is, if I go to bring it in right there, it stops. It won't go any further. And that's because right here on the subframe, it is indeed hitting. So I loosened up my muffler to give it some play. And that's where it touches. So I'm gonna mark that with a Sharpie and reluctantly dent the pipe right there a little bit and see if we gain the clearance we need. After test fitting, you can see it's moved away, but the line is perfect. The dent is in the right spot. However, we have another problem. The clutch cover right here is also hitting the header. And this is not something I wanna blame Rocket for. This is a Z125 swap. 
for those who haven't seen this whole build or whatever, just don't, you know, don't say, hey, Rocket, why do you guys build headers that don't fit? That's not necessarily the case. This is a KLX head, but we do have the clutch cover from the Z125, and the mount for this cable is 100% different than the one that's on the KLX 110. You can see by the lack of Kickstarter, the way the oil fills down here, which led to the goofy brake pedal, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna dent it here, and then we're gonna come back and try it again. All right, so I polished out my two dents. I got one right here that looks disgusting, and I hate that I had to do that. And then I've got this one, which is minimal and fine. To be completely honest, and again, to not throw rocket under the bus, this dent may have not even been necessary. I saw it on the FMF. I assumed it probably had to come to this one too, but then again, it's a brand new header. Why would you have to dent it? Had I realized that this dent needed to be here first because I have a unique clutch cover, I probably could have saved myself that one. Unfortunately, uh, it's already there. So let's burn it. Time lapse, as you can see the color go into it pretty quick. I'm gonna go ahead and just take some material off this cover before I even put the header back on. It's installed, it's tight. The only thing I have left to do is sort out the muffler location. Got my lower hole drilled, muffler's up nice and high. Looks pretty good and uh, no contact here, which is great. And also, you might be able to see that there's light coming through, there's also no contact there now. I did put a small aluminum spacer behind it to pull the muffler this way and the number plate still fits. All in all, that's gonna look pretty sweet, I think. Muffler could go a little bit higher, but not without making a lot of changes to the actual system, I think. I'm happy with it, I think it looks good. Let's see what it sounds like. I'll let it warm up for a second, and then I'll rev it. Went and rode it, sounds sick, sounds really good, I'm pumped. I'm actually gonna go take it out in about an hour and we're gonna film some more clips on the same track but this time with a different exhaust and hopefully uh, you know, it'll sound better on camera too. Like I said, the mic doesn't pick up all the sounds but it'll still, it should sound better, it should sound better. So anyway, I pulled the foot peg mount off because these pegs are absolute garbage, as you can see here. And I'm not a big fan of the BBR peg mount, but for some reason I have like three of them. And these are also XR50 fitments, so maybe that's why. Just old project stuff laying around. But I did get the IMS pegs. I'm gonna put them on a peg bar. Uh, I might switch bars, but this one's already clearance for a cradle, which I always wanted to run a cradle on this setup because it is, you know, technically the frame's been weakened by the fuel pump bracket and all that stuff. Um, but anyhow, I'm gonna put one of these on here for now. And I've got, you can see the shifter is really, really short, but that's because the BBR peg mount moves the pegs back, similar to what the Z125 pegs do when they sit on the frame itself, like the rear sets, They essentially they'd call them rear sets, I guess. Uh, so on this setup, same idea, shorter shifter, my feet aren't very big, so this works. But I did order a Kinetic KLX OEM position mount with some of those flow foot pegs. That's not here yet, so this will work for now. And then when this setup changes, I'll take this stuff off and move it to this bike, and that way it doesn't go to waste. Ugh, just trash, man. Like cast. Somebody gave me these, so this wasn't a choice. They say you never let your confidence outweigh your accomplishments and never let a compliment. All right, so we're back out at the little test track. Cut a few of those clips short. I went ahead and put a skid plate on. I changed the oil, fresh oil filter, and uh, I did a few laps already. So the bike's already a bit dusty. I got Jeremy doing a few laps, and now you can hear the different exhaust. Sounds way better. Hopefully, it sounds better on camera.
Okay, that's gonna do it. I'm really stoked on the way this thing sounds. Hope you guys like it. I know it's been a hell of a journey, right? It's been almost like two, two years on this thing. But thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna post another video pretty soon, finishing things up, you know, tidying up the wiring harness, uh, adding a cradle, blah, 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 all that good stuff. So hopefully not too long, but I'm not gonna make any promises this time. Thanks as always. Peace.